Good morning, my fellow Canadians. My name is Bashir Fancy, and I'm here today uh, talking to you on behalf of the founders of BizTech Professional Association of Canada, or in short, BTPAC. I will explain in great detail what we are all about and how we are going to do our part to help uh, Canadians and people in both business and technology. But before I go any further, I want to share with you, each and every one of you, that our thoughts and prayers are with everyone at this very difficult time of coronavirus. And we hope and pray that you stay safe. And from our side, we will do everything possible to, to help in any small measure uh, that we can take to, uh, to help out. The um, coronavirus has, has impacted a lot of families, individuals, and my and our only hope and advice to people, which majority of you are already doing, is that please take the medical uh, advice uh, and the government advice to stay at home and stay safe so that we don't burden the system, which makes it difficult for us anyway. So God bless each and every one of you and hope you stay safe. So with that, let me move on to what I'm here to talk about today which is BTPAC or BizTech Professional Association of Canada. So BTPAC or BizTech Professional Association of Canada is here to do a couple of things. You see our logo on the left. We are part of um, ICCP, which many of you would know, is the Institute for Certification of Computing Professionals. They've been around for a very, very long time, over 50 years. Um, they're based out of Chicago, and they do both the education certification training, um, and they do it not just in the U.S., but many countries in the world. Three out of the four of us who are founders of this organization sit on the board, and I will tell you that in a second yeah, as I go into more detail. So who are the four of us? Uh, Myself, Peshir Fancy, Leon Vekshal, Ken Metcalf, and Professor Iqbal Khan of the Centennial College. And we're very excited in bringing this project. So who are we targeting? What, what we are trying to do here is to make sure that we're helping our youth, the corporations, the uh, workforce that already is uh, in place today, our communities, and by extension, provinces, countries, and uh, we're targeting Canada. But we are elsewhere, and so we'll help whoever else that needs the help. We have significant amount of ex expertise uh, in the four of us, both hands-on and at the senior executive corner suite uh, level in terms of many different industries that span many countries, and as I said, both technology and business. And also we have a pretty solid background in the professional certification of business and technology, and we'll go into that more detail. So this is four of us. Now, uh, three of us, as I mentioned already, on the board of ICCP. On the top right, you see Ken Metcalf, who has been the president of ICCP in the past, and he is also an executive, uh, fairly big corporate organization. Uh, bottom left, Leon Wechsel. He also uh, had been uh, the president for the foundation at ICCP and also has a very long history in both business, technology, and uh, even in, in the, as I mentioned, in education. So, and then, of course, Professor Iqbal Khan is, um, teaches technology at the Centennial College. And um, collectively, we bring a lot of background, but it's not going to be just four of us. This is just a starter. So what are the challenges? The challenges we're talking about is that technology is moving at a lightning pace. It's nobody's fault. That's exactly what is going on out there. And by the virtue of that pace, we are creating or it is creating a skills gap out there because there's a rapid changes in technology and, and it's not possible uh, unless a company that invested money a year or two years ago suddenly throws it away to now buy something. That's not going to happen. So that creates skills gaps and 
how do you deal with so you can't take advantage of the technology the business can't take advantage of the potential opportunities or cost savings that may be there so there are some very interesting and serious challenges out there that need to be dealt with unfortunately the coronavirus has also changed and will change without doubt how the business is done today going forward it's also kind of showing you a failure of risk management in terms of how we planned or not planned uh, what has happened as we all know risk management is a is a pretty uh, interesting area i used to head that for uh, visa and uh, i was also the global head of internal audit for visa so my background spans many other industries just like my colleagues and uh, we'll talk more about the other stuff now um as i mentioned we got more than 120 years between four of us but that's not all we are connected to thousands of people with tremendous expertise both at the hands on level uh, middle management and at the corner suite level globally so that enables us to bring any of these experts as required <clears throat> to share with you their experiences the good bad and what worked what didn't work and how you go about it which is very important because <clears throat> just the pieces of paper don't do anything by themselves we also know that it and business the thin line that has existed is disappearing and in fact has disappeared in many places so if you're a business person you better understand technology you don't have to be able to program but you understand how it works to take advantage of it and if you're a technology person you need to understand exactly what the business is about after so that when you develop solutions you address the real needs of today and tomorrow so that is extremely important so what should we do um well we need to do things right but we need to do the right things now the reason i bring this up very quickly is many organizations may have a project they're doing and they do it damn good problem is not the fact that you didn't do the project well the question is what you supposed to do then in the first place because things have changed you should be addressing something else that will address your problems of tomorrow and and future and, and of course address what you're doing today but if you look around many times you see projects that are actually taking place do not necessarily address tomorrow's problem may address today's or more even yesterday's because you have had a lot of complaints and stuff like that so it's extremely important to understand uh, this part so your prioritization where you put the money is very important now our communication has to be extremely clear and this is no criticism of any single person or entity or government or whoever but just shows you how things go we have been talking last few weeks about social distancing what do we really mean we are actually talking about physical distancing not social in fact i would argue that you want to stay socially active otherwise you're going to have serious mental and other psychological problems if you are cooped up at home and not communicating so socially you want to be connected to your family and friends and whatever but physically you want to be distanced like i am doing right now where i am actually talking to you from my home but we can communicate so that is extremely important that we actually communicate very clearly in the organization and what can be a better example than this and there are plenty of others that what we meant what we say and what we mean here are definitely two different things so it's really important to to understand that now continuing forward the challenges uh, the businesses are facing of course you out so outsource a lot of the companies outsource for a good reason but mainly to save costs i happen to be one of the guys who did actually manage a third party processing payment field for many organizations banks and all that people did not outsource to us because we were the best in the world we were pretty good at what we were doing but they outsourced to us for cost savings because we could do it cheaper but in order to do that we actually did everything in terms of bringing our talent up to address the needs of those institutions organizations that actually outsourced to us but guess what happened then and i actually got examples i certainly want going to it here where they had seconded those responsibilities to us which means that techno that ex expertise and technology existed in our organization 
as the outsource uh, outsourcer and not uh, in the organization that outsourced to us. So something to think about that have we thought through this risk? Today we got to talk about the medication uh, up in US. They're saying it might work, might not work. We don't know that, but it's not manufactured in this country. The other country involved has shut down for three weeks. So what does it mean? You can't deal with it. So there are many different things that this uh, kind of creates an opportunity for us to think about it. Doesn't mean you don't do it, but you understand the risks and make sure you've got process in place to mitigate. And therefore, as I explained, the objectives that we have may be different. But uh, and the last part is in order to do some uh, kind of cost savings, many companies do that. And I can uh, tell you, been involved with uh, an organization where you do something to save money. Um, you could sell an asset and show up as, as, as a profit on the books because you've written it off, depreciated. But guess what? It's not actually profit from operations. So you reach a point in time where you've got no assets left and you can go bankrupt. And people, many people would already realize some of the companies I'm talking about because it's already happened in Canada. So those are the things to think about that when you take those short term measures and you haven't thought through this fully, you actually in turn have unintended long term consequences and technology is, is a good place also as is business. So um, <clears throat> one of the other challenges, anytime you want to fix a problem, you obviously need to understand uh, right across the organization. But we have silos. Um, that's not uh, critical uh, of any again, any organization. We've all been part of it. Because as the organizations go bigger, as specialization occurs, uh, and then you now have a different challenge because you may not understand. You might not even be able to figure out the problem because the costs are spread so widely across different budgets in a, in a large organization that you may not be able to measure exactly what that problem or that particular thing is costing you. And so that creates its own challenge. So gen there's also a general expectation that our oh, technology will solve every problem and it's that's not true. So we need to think about it. But last but not least on this one, we want to make sure that the culture is something that is actually addressed. Because if we don't do that, we're going to have problems and new ideas will get lost. Um, as I mentioned about the technology moving very fast, of course, it's created skills gaps. And you also need agile rules to kind of move fast because with artificial intelligence and analytics and all these things that are advancing, are we ready to deal with what the challenges that might come about in terms of people getting displaced? Well, that's something to think about. The workforce is aging and knowledge transfer uh, is not necessarily formalized or occurring in many places. So uh, we have been doing mentoring for a few years. Those who have actually been working with us do understand that, that we can help. We have also seen uh, studies that are showing that young entrants are having some challenges because we bring in a bright guy with all sorts of degrees and uh, let him run with it. The challenge is, of course, that he may not understand all facets of the, as we call the taste of real world, and then you get into trouble. So we are moving towards this articling program, and I will talk more about it later, um, to, to make sure that people are prepared properly. And so it's mentoring, it's, it's, it's making sure that they have the real life experience. So, and again, we need to get rid of the fallacy that technology is solution to everything. It's not. So we recognize that the knowledge skill silos occur. And when we try to help you, we will make sure that we are addressing uh, and respecting the firewalls that exist in many organizations. There's also need to embrace and stay ahead, right, as we keep talking about. Because a lot of things I've talked about is about how the uh, pace of technology is, 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 is very rapid. So we need to prepare this uh, people, both existing workforce and new people coming in. And we are going to play a significant role. Now, it's not our intent to do anything different from the standpoint that if there are, and what I mean by that is there are organizations that are specialized in providing training and uh, perhaps certification for cloud computing, artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, blockchain, and many other things. We're not trying to replicate anything. We're going to work with where at a high level 
trying to make sure that both all those things are understood and then when we tackle this we tackle with if somebody's got that background and understanding we will respect and and recognize that so that is not as i said not about us the i have no doubt that anybody in the organization would agree with the statement just because you understand one area of technology does not automatically translate into understanding the business needs and how it applies to business and many times to the other parts of the business but because you are very good at what you do you don't understand you are given a requirement to do a certain things so you know the what to do not necessarily the why so there is also no guarantee that i bring you a piece of paper and tell you i have this certification that i may have got it 20 years ago that it may not be current that it may not address the current needs because of the dynamic changes or for that matter when you got a certification what level is the address so we certainly tackle the iccp and 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 now at bbistech in canada to make sure that we address those those needs so we are offering a lo lot of different uh, things here which i'll go into details and i have already talked about the fact that uh, ICCP has been delivering certifications for over 50 years. <clears throat> we have exceptional talents in the organization that's from the corporate world and academia. Our advisory council members also cover a broad range of extensive businesses and technology at high level and at the hands-on level so that we get the real flavor making sure that we address pe people's uh, and organizations needs. and we take pride in the fact that the body of knowledge is is continually reviewed and upgraded as are the exams to make sure that they remain relevant otherwise uh, we have done the same thing the code of ethics is very important oh, we need to go back to 2008 or any other financial crisis or any other problems that we have had uh, people knew how to program when all these bad things happen is not that people didn't know how to program or take advantage Uh, of things, but the ethics and integrity were in short supply. We have a, that challenge, and this is extremely important area. So what we have done is we have adopted, as we work with our, one of our partners, which is ACM, have done a fantastic code of ethics, and we have adopted those um, uh, code of ethics. Again, showing we are not here to reinvent anything. We'll take the best. of everything and anything people have done and then augmented with a lot of stuff that we have so we're not here to reinvent anything but we're going to work with colleges schools uh, uh, and universities to make sure that our certification uh, are upgraded we will continue to seek input from all the different stakeholders whether it be schools corporations whoever to make sure that again we update what we are teaching and, and implement that and we will include that in the mentoring program so we target the areas where we need to kind of do so that and this will be done obviously jointly to make sure we can take advantage of that but we will all also address soft skills and very quickly without going too much into detail soft skills is where people are very smart but you you're in technology you go to corner suite to to sell a concept you're talking bits and bytes to the ceo or cfo that is fantastic because of the the bits and bytes uh, that you, you, and security and firewalls you're going to bring in. but that's not what the ceo or the corner suite is looking at they're looking what does this translate into does it save me money does it make me money does it make me compliant does it increase my market share does it improve my shareholder value so you need to talk a language that actually addresses what the objectives of the organization are. and we see from a lot of young people also this is not happening so we need to uh, make sure we have now how we're going to do this is those who have been taking advantage of the webinars i've been doing for a long time know that we will actually do a lot more we have stopped that for the past year now we are there with bt pack and we're going to do that so it'll be webinars uh led by experts from around the world so we are not only doing things ourselves but we're bringing the best of the best and you will see that in fact this week because we already done couple uh we speak at events i have spoken and chaired many of the conferences continue to do so but it's not just me it's all four of us and more uh so that we can 
not only talk to people, but listen to what your needs are um, so that we can actually understand and target your needs, which will even may translate into a corporate uh, organization asking us to create something for them, even, even in, uh, like a certification. By the way, that's already happened. So uh, it's something we, we can work with any organization that needs. And of course, we do brainstorming and we've created this technology that enable us to kind of come work with all the people. The articling program that we are talking about is not to be confused with any uh, of the core programs that people do. I look at uh, things have changed. But as I was doing my CA and a lot of people have done or you're doing your uh, legal uh, training, you article to a senior partner who's responsible to make sure of your success and address your challenges. It's kind of that with corporate world involved in it so that we can help that actually make sure that you upgrade the skills of the existing people but more importantly, the new people. And that's how you bridge the gaps. You try to even change the culture and therefore you, of course, improve the outcome. We're going to partner with universities, as I've said, and I'm just kind of emphasizing it again to make sure that we get the best of the outstanding professionals involved with us and pair up so that we can do a lot of these um, things that I'm talking about. And um, the stakeholders is everybody, colleges, government, uh, communities, schools. So again, as I said, we'll improve the body of knowledge, listen to you. And we're going to be releasing a lot more detail very shortly as we continue to do stuff because there was not the intent today. Just to Today was to share with you. Now, if I was doing this and there was no problem, we would have had a big event downtown to release that with a lot of the people and advisors, advisory board and board members all present. Unfortunately, the circumstances are such that we can't do that at the moment. That doesn't stop us from, as I said, socially being very active in physically distancing, but achieving our objectives. So we believe that this lot of this part that's going on now could be the new normal. So organization will have to prepare. We are here to help. We are not here for any other reason other than that. We started this organization with our money to get it going because we're committed to it. We're not for profit. We don't take a dime, nor will we ever do that because we are here volunteering because there's no use us having this knowledge that we have attained over many years if we can't do something for, for anybody else because we don't, we don't take that knowledge with us. It's no use. Each and every one of us that has succeeded, and I'm sure that's true of many people out there, is we didn't get to where we, I didn't get all the success and be the executive vice president of Visa and many other organizations, Citibank or Air Canada or uh, stuff that I ran, third party, that it was people helping me along the way. It was excellent mentors. So it's time for us to give back. That's why we are here, because we believe in this. And you will see a tremendous amount of commitment from each of us as we move forward. So. As I leave with you this uh, slide, this is BizTech Professional Association of Canada, ICCP. The four founders, I put the email out there. We will also be giving you, but for now, you can send any of us the emails if you want to be registered so that we can inform you as we're doing webinars over the next few days. And we will continue that that's going to be part of stuff. The other good news is that for now, uh, as far as uh, we can see, at least let's say a year for sure, there are going to be zero fees. There's no fees. The only fee you will pay is when you get certified. That, And we're also looking at how we address people who already have uh, education certification they've done to see can we do something uh, there to address their needs. So it is us listening to your needs, us listening to what is going on, watching the world, working with people. So it's not about us, it's about you. But the most important point I left to the last is that we can't do these things by ourselves. We need people to help, which means participate with us. If you are an educator, please contact us. We want to work with you. If you're a corporate world, we can work with you to help. If you're university and colleges, many of you we are already working with. 
and so there's no problem. But the intent being, and if you're a student or you're in, in the workforce, please contact us, register. You can volunteer with us. You can certainly provide content. You can speak uh, uh, and help us with the webinars. You can help with the brainstorm sessions. You can help, help with the, running the special interest groups. We have few people, but we need more uh, to be successful because we are about you. It is your organization that we've created, and we want to work with each and every one of you. So thank you very much for taking time to listen to, to me today. And this is only a start as we come through and deliver more stuff. So please stay in touch. And I thank you each and every one for taking time to listen to this. God bless you and stay safe.